Hi everyone, Hamish here for the Uplay team at Massive. And today I wanted to go over what is probably the most asked question when we talk about dual PC stream setups. And that is how do I sort out this crazy mess of audio? So today I'm gonna to show you how to put together two different types of setups, a hardware based one with a physical mixing desk or a software based one with voice meter banana. All right, let's go. I think the big confusion and the big problem that people have when setting up these types of audio setups for dual PC streaming rigs is that there seems to be a lot of buttons and a lot of things to plug into each other and it just seems like a bit of a mess. Now, if you ask 10 different people how they do it, they're gonna give you a different answer each time. I mean, in this room alone, where we stream State of the Game for The Division, we do some gameplay streams, we have multiple dual PC setups and they kind of all have different needs, so they're all set up differently. Anyway, if you're anything like me, you love a good piece of hardware. So today we're gonna to start with the physical mixing desk option. Okay, so to make this kind of straightforward and something that you can follow along, I've unplugged everything for you. We're gonna start absolutely from scratch. Now, to avoid being a bit aimless when we're setting all of these things up and just plugging things in randomly, what we wanna do is define exactly what we want from the end use case. For example, I know that I want my stream to hear me. I know that I want people to hear me on Discord. I know that I wanna be able to control my game volume on the mixing desk, and I also wanna be able to change the volume of the people who I'm talking to on Discord and all that sort of thing. The other thing that can be a bit confusing with these setups is knowing all of the different cables that you'll need to use. So here's a quick rundown. You'll need at least an XLR cable to get your microphone into your mixing desk. To get sound to and from your PCs, you'll likely need some 3.5 millimeter cables because those are the ones that will fit into the back of your motherboard. 3.5 millimeter cables will not actually plug into your mixing desk unless you have a very specific one. So you're gonna need to adapt that cable from a 3.5 all the way up to a quarter inch. The other thing that's handy to note is that there is a difference between quarter inch connections. They come in two different flavors. So you have TS or TRS. So tip and sleeve or tip ring and sleeve. Now those have different uses and we won't really go into each of those too much today, but good to know. So let's go ahead and tick off each of those things one by one. So all my power's off, let's start plugging in the basics. We have power. For this setup, I'm also connecting the mixer over USB into my encoding machine. And then I have my microphone going in over XLR into the desk. All right, so we now have this microphone plugged into channel one on our mixer. We're gonna turn it on, and then we're also gonna turn on the phantom power at the back because this needs that as well to operate. Here we can see in our recording settings that the microphone is picking up signal, so that's good news. Task one is done. Let's head into the OBS audio settings just to make sure that we're all good here as well. We'll set this to our USB audio, and now we can see that we are showing up in the mic and auxiliary part in OBS. So microphone's done. Let's just work with the mic for now and not complicate it with getting those other audio sources in. We need to get our microphone over to our gaming machine as well. We know that our stream can hear us, that's cool. But how are people gonna hear us in game using this same microphone? One of the things that I've also just noticed on this is that the mic and auxiliary stuff that's coming into OBS is coming through mono or just a single track. What we really want is a stereo pair of tracks so we can get some spatial sound. Not for this microphone, that's fine to be mono, but when we have spatial sound things, like if we're playing a shooting game and we want to get those gameplay sources in, we really want to have left and right channels so people can kind of understand where we're at in that space. So let's go into our recording devices here and just change that. So let's just focus on the microphone for a bit. We've got it going into our stream. That's cool. Our stream will be able to hear us, but we also want people to be able to hear us in game. And because this is all going into our streaming PC, our gameplay machine doesn't have any microphone sources. Now there are different ways to do this, but let's go with the one that I think most people will end up using. For this, we'll want to look at our auxiliary sends straight off our mixing desk. So we'll take our quarter inch TS and plug that into auxiliary send one. Then what we're going to do is convert that from quarter inch to 3.5 mil. Then what we're gonna do is duck around the back of our gaming PC and plug this 3.5 mil in the same place you would plug in any microphone on the back of your motherboard. Hey, 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 hey. So then from here, what's basically happening is the signal's going in our microphone all the way into channel one on our mixer. 
Then if we come down channel one, before we get to the fader, we actually have a knob for auxiliary. Basically, you can create another mix just using these knobs and then send that separately rather than through the main mix. So then what we'll do is we'll go to the auxiliary send knob on our disk. We'll set that to just zero so it's nice and uniform. Then as I start to turn up the auxiliary knob that we have on this microphone, you'll see it showing up in the recording device. Perfect, there it is. So now we can use this as a microphone source on the gaming machine, whether that be in the options of a gaming menu or in Discord and that sort of stuff. All right, so all of our microphone boxes are checked. We have our stream hearing us, we have people in game hearing us. Now we need to make sure that we can get the game onto the mixing desk so people on the stream can hear exactly what's going on there. Your best bet for this is gonna be using one of the channels on your mixer that has a stereo pair or a left and right channel like let's say track seven and eight. What we're gonna to do to get that signal all the way into our desk is use a 3.5 millimeter cable like you would when you're setting up speakers for your gaming PC. Then what we're gonna do is convert that from 3.5 into two quarter inch TS connections. You'll also see that these usually denote the tip and the ring for these. And when they're talking about that, what they're talking about is something like this. You'll notice that the 3.5 millimeter cable has two insulating rings on it or a tip a ring and a sleeve, all conductors. Fun fact, the tip will always be the signal from the left, the ring will always be the one from the right, and the sleeve is always the ground. So because of that, we know that the tip will be our left channel, we know that the ring will be our right channel, and then we'll be able to start getting this into our mix. All right, let's just quickly mute our microphone so we can see where that audio source is coming from. We can now bring up the level of this channel and we can see that the video we're playing back on our gaming PC is coming through to our mix on our streaming PC. So good news, we got that one in. Now that's basically everything that you need to know. You can replicate what you've done here on the channel that we're using for our gameplay. And you could bring in your other PC, you could run Spotify on that one and then mix that independently. But the same theory still applies. You could just run the same setup into another PC or a phone you could play your music from Spotify or whatever. It will all work that way as well. You can see here in Discord that we're using the microphone input device that we've hooked up to the auxiliary send on our mixing desk. And as we turn up this, you'll start to see that microphone signal coming in. So now people in Discord can hear us and we have independent control over that. Now for us to hear them, we'll use that output device um, that we have here as well. And that's the one that we're using for our game sound too. So you'll need to adjust this independently. All right, so that's gonna be everything we need to cover for the mixing desk part of this tutorial. If you followed along, you should have a good understanding now of how to get your microphone into both your gaming PC and so your stream can hear you and then also get other sounds from other PCs into your mixing desk so you can adjust the final mix with that be game sounds or music or Discord and that sort of thing. Now, the reason I started with the hardware mixer version of this setup is that I think a lot of the problems that people fall into with something like voice meter banana is that it is entirely foreign. But if you apply the same thinking that we've done here to the software version of it, it becomes a little bit clearer how to proceed. Time to unplug this and get started with the software version. All right, so first things first, if you want to set up voice meter banana for your dual PC streaming setup, well, you're gonna need the software first. So head over to vbaudio.com or just Google voice meter banana and you'll find yourself here. You'll want to download and install the voice meter setup files. Let's also grab the virtual audio cable as well. We'll be using this during our setup to route some extra audio. And what you've learned from the hardware mixer portion of this tutorial, we should be able to apply here. Once you've got all of those installed and your PC's rebooted, these audio devices should show up in your playback and recording devices in Windows settings. So let's go ahead and set our voice meter input to default. We'll also set our recording devices voice meter output to default. So once you start up voice meter banana, it's gonna look a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot going on here. And one of the things that I think is really handy and will be the best thing you can do to help you learn this piece of software is untick everything. Right now we have the equivalent of a hardware mixer that has a million cables plugged into it and you kind of don't want to pull things out and you're not really sure of where things are going. Let's just start from scratch like you would if you had a hardware mixer and took it out of the box for the first time. Okay, untick all of these, all of these, and we can start fresh. Now let's just talk briefly about where we want this mix to end up. I want to hear some of it 
in my headphones, not all of it. I don't really want to hear myself back, even though we could do that if you like. But I also want this signal to be sent through the HDMI cables that I've got running through my 4K60 Pro Elgato capture card that's capturing my gameplay, and then that's going to end up in OBS as well. So over here in OBS right now on our encoding machine, the picture that you're seeing is the 4K60 Pro capture card. So up here in the top right of Voice Meter Banana, you have A1, A2, and A3. You'll also see those reflected throughout these different channels. What we'll do is we'll select the devices that we want our mix to go to. So I want these coming into my headphones. So we'll select my Scarlett Solo USB device. That's cool. That's what these headphones are plugged into. I will also select the Dell monitor that I'm using because I know that's what my Elgato capture card is routing to. So that's why it's recognizing it as that. So we've set A1 to my headphones and set A2 to go to the same destination as wherever my gameplay is going through my 4K60 Pro capture card. Okay, so let's now do the exact same thing that we did with the hardware mixer before and do the equivalent of plugging this microphone into this virtual mixer. We're going to go ahead and select the microphone device that we're using, which in our case is going to be the Scarlett Solo USB audio interface. And we can see that we now have signal. Okay, so let's turn the gain up appropriately wherever we want. We'll get into mixing at some point. But now we don't have this going anywhere. There's nothing showing up in our OBS machine. So why is that? Well, we've done the equivalent of having everything on mute here. We're not sending it anywhere. So let's send this hardware input one. Actually, let's just rename this microphone and we're going to send it to A2. Up here to our hardware out portion, we're going to send it over the Elgato capture card into OBS. Cool. It's showing up, and the levels look pretty good, but we can tweak those. Now, if I press A1, obviously, you guessed it, it's going to show up in my headphones, which is really disorienting. You can also see here that it's only coming in the left channel. Uh, that's because this is not actually a stereo microphone. So we want to set this to mono. So we're using the microphone the way it's intended. Okay, now our stream can hear us. Now, you'll remember what we did next for the hardware mixer was make sure that we found a way to get our microphone not just into OBS, but also into Discord and our games and that sort of thing. It's actually a little bit easier here to get your microphone in because you've already got an input device on this machine, which for us is our Scarlett Solo USB. Now, here's where it gets a little bit complicated. We want to get the output device of Discord into our virtual mixer, which is Voice Meter Banana, and then we want to send that and have control over it independently so we can really customize it when we send it from Voice Meter Banana over our Elgato capture card into OBS. With me? All right, let's do this. Let's start by doing the equivalent of plugging one end of a cable into Discord. And for this, we're going to be using the cable input of the VB audio virtual cable that we downloaded earlier. All right, that cable is plugged in. Where are we plugging it into, though? Now, what we're doing here is basically choosing the other end of that cable. So it can be a little bit disconcerting when you set up Discord this way, because when you start testing on Discord, you'll actually hear yourself back. That would be how it works when you actually start using it. So run a test with a friend on a voice call to get an actual representation of what it's going to sound like. But we can see that it's working for now. We'll hear it in our headphones if we click A1. Ah, ah, ah. And if we hit A2 to it'll show up on our OBS feed as well. Cool. All right, that's definitely the hardest part of the equation. And just to recap, what we are doing here is we've plugged one end of the cable into the output device of Discord that is then being plugged into channel three on Voice Meter Banana. Then what we're doing is we're sending whatever we hear to A1 and A2, or our headphones for A1 and OBS for A2. Now that our microphones are good to go, let's get our game sound all the way from Voice Meter Banana into OBS over on our encoding machine. And I say game sound, but usually when I'm testing these things, I'm using some other audio source on this machine. I'll just throw up something on YouTube and see if we can get it over there. All right, this part's pretty easy because what you can see is under Voice Meter VAIO and virtual inputs, we're seeing some waveform pop up. So now if we hit A2, this will be sending it over to OBS here on our encoding machine. If we hit A1, we'll hear it in our headphones. We can then mix these independently here using the fader gain. And that's basically all you have to do to get Voice Meter Banana up and running. 
Like I said, there are a million ways that you can route audio in this software, which is pretty cool that they give it away for free. You can send things to a virtual output, have a program read that in a different way. You can really define how you wanna bring in and send your audio to a multitude of different places. I can't stress enough though, that if you really wanna learn how this piece of software works, I can't give you a better tip than starting from scratch. Resetting it to default settings inside the menu won't be enough because by default, it already has some routing built in. You'll wanna go in, toggle everything off, and then that way you'll be able to see the impact of the changes that you make. The cables you plug in, the way that you send audio to different channels, it'll really help you understand how Voice Meta Banana works. Hopefully you learned something from today's video and that demystifies a little bit all of the intricacies of putting together your own audio setup for your dual PC streaming rig. I can't overstate exactly how much I recommend setting everything back to baseline before you start tinkering around with the software and hardware that you'll be using. By starting from scratch, you'll learn how everything works and the implications of turning on and off absolutely everything in your setup. But now that we've got either your hardware or your software setup working, this is really just scratching the surface of what we're able to do. If you're into the hardware side of things, you'll be able to customize your setup to the ends of the earth. We actually use some compressors through an insert for our state of the game setup. And also there's a bunch of EQ options and all sorts of things that you can do with Voice Meter Banana. So if you are interested in some more advanced topics, we're gonna be covering those in an upcoming video. Do you wanna know how to make your game sound lower when you're speaking on your microphone so people can hear you more clearly? Or maybe you wanna know how to retain transparency on your fancy Stinger transitions in OBS. We can help you with that too. On that note, if you are still having issues with the audio setup for your dual PC rig, do come by our Discord and we'll help you out as best we can and make sure to come back next week or follow our channel so you can get notified when that next video goes live and we can touch on all those advanced topics. All right, see you soon. Bye.